Every single year, thousands of people buy condos in Toronto, getting advice from people that don't fundamentally understand the market, getting sold on a dream that if they put money down on this property right now in five years, it's going to be worth double. We're expecting to not only earn money on their investment, but cash flow every single month from day one. My name's Tom Story. There are very few people that have sold more condos on our team in the last five years. And I'm going to go over the five biggest mistakes I see people making every single day. If you watch this video and learn anything new, all we ask is that you hit that like button. If you have not already, subscribe and join our growing community. And because of this channel, I've got to meet so many awesome people just like you. So if you want to connect with us to talk about what's going on, you can go to the first link in the description, book a call at a time that works for you. Condo market is pivotal to what happens in Toronto real estate because there's more inventory than there is homes. We're still building at a very rapid pace. There's so many investors that have put their money into this segment of the market that depending what happens with condos, it will kind of show where the market is going. There's a condo for everyone. There's a condo for a first time home buyer, for a downsizer, for the luxury market, for the savvy investor out there. I myself started investing in Toronto real estate through condos, but even I made a few of these mistakes along the way. So let's get into the five mistakes I want you to avoid. Mistake number one is buying a condo and expecting it to go up in price this year. Check out the date when this video was released. My personal opinion is that condo prices won't necessarily go up this year. I think they'll maybe go up 2%, maybe go down 2%, but it'll hover somewhere in the middle. Based on the inventory that we have today, all the new properties coming to the market that are being built right now, bringing that inventory that's coming, and all the investors with high interest rates that are trying to figure out what to do, if I look at all of that from bird's eye view from above, it just doesn't look like a market that's going to increase in value. Do not be buying a condo this year if you specifically want it to go up in value in the next 12 months. I can't guarantee to you that's going to happen. To take it one step further, I don't think anybody watching this video that's thinking about buying a condo should be buying one if you're not going to hold it for minimum five years minimum five years, okay? That's typically enough time for markets to go through its cycle that at the end of it, you will come out okay. But if it's anything less than that, do not buy anything. Mistake number two is buying a new construction or a pre-construction condo this year without doing your homework. Okay, so that last part is very important. A lot of people I'm seeing are getting caught up in the sexy marketing. They're being sold this dream. Real estate agents get paid more commission on these new home sales than they do on the resale market. I think some projects are great and some are gonna be good investments in the long term. And if you bought pre-construction from the year 2000 to 2015, you looked like a genius investor. You were making money. There's a lot of people whose life is set because they invested heavily over those 15 years and those properties are six times up in value right now. But the good times don't last forever and you're paying an absolute premium. There's just so many people that I've talked to that I've met on this YouTube channel that call me after the fact and say, Tom, how do I get out of this? How do I assign this? I don't wanna close on this thing. I'm like, who told you to buy this? Did you not know that you could go next door and buy something 30% cheaper? So no shade is being thrown for the really good agents that go over projects that are great. And you know who those people are already. It's just like buying pre-construction without doing your homework, without knowing the premium that you are paying. It's wild to me that when I get phone calls from people that say like, you know, I'd, I'd rather buy pre-construction. I'm like, well, why? They're like, well, I've heard if you get in early, you get the best deal. I'm like, yeah, technically in the new construction space, but you're still paying a 30% premium versus what you could buy next door today. Okay, rant over on the pre-construction side of things. Mistake number three is that thinking that buying a condo as a landlord is going to be an easy investment. Now, 95% of the time, tenants are great. You're gonna have no issues. I've personally had amazing tenants. I also had a situation where I had to go to landlord tenant board, present in front of them. We won the case, but it took months and months and months just to move back into a property that I own so that I could live in it, right? So the rules are very one-sided. I do think investing in condos is easier than homes, but in general, like there's nothing passive about real estate investing. Someone is renting from you, finding shelter from something that you've purchased and you have to treat them well and you have to know the rules and you have to understand what you can do and what you cannot do. And the same thing on the other side. I've had a lot of people call me that say, you know, I've saved up my 20%. I want to get into the condo market and there's two things I'm looking for. I want to buy an asset that's going to go up in value and I want it to cash flow. And at this moment in time, I can't promise you either of those. Going up in value is subjective. I think into the future, you're going to be fine on that side of things. But cash flowing with 20% down is gone. 
It's not happening in the city of Toronto. Realistically, you got to put 40% down at today's mortgage rates just to break even. Mistake number four is buying on emotion. Now, I get that not everybody is a numbers person like me. Like, I fully understand that. But going in and not having all your ducks in a row and being fooled by the amazing staging furniture and the bright photos, that's not what you're getting. What you're buying is a floor plan, a location. There are certain things that you cannot change about the property and that's what you should be buying it based on. Every purchasing decision that people make in life is probably based on emotion, logic, or fear. It's not a fear-based buying market. We're not buying because we think, well, if we don't buy, it's gonna be way more expensive next week. That's kind of gone at this point in time. So you should be buying on logic. And yes, I understand emotion will creep in there. But when you're going through this process, have your blinders on, know what you are looking for. Don't get caught up in all the other stuff going around here. Be very specific on what you're trying to get because you're going to own this thing, as we talked about at the beginning, for a minimum five years. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you probably know my out of 10 rule. It's fairly simple. You walk into a condo and I say to you, where would you rank this on a scale of one to 10 within your budget? You cannot say seven. Seven is average. You should not be feeling average about a property that you're spending half a million to a million dollars on, right? So it's six or below, which is move on. It's not the right place for you. As someone that represents buyers, I'm not trying to sell you on that specific listing. It's just making sure that you make a decision that you're never going to regret. If it's at least an eight or a nine, that's when you look at your real stage and go, okay, I like this. I'm thinking about making an offer. Let's go over strategy for this specific property. Do 10 out of 10s exist? Yeah, they do. They're just more rare. And typically other people have realized that as well. And those are the properties that get multiple offers. Mistake number five, and this is really just for the first time home buyers that are watching this video, is buying an investor only building. So a lot of these newer buildings, which a lot of people are attracted to, right? Because they're newer, they're currently not under rent control if they were built after November 2018. So a lot of people like that when they're buying these properties, even if their goal isn't to rent it out right away. If you buy into a building, take a look. It will show you in the stats and your realtor can do the math for you. How many units are there and how many were rented out in the last 24 months? If you're buying in a building that has 80% investors and it's all rented out, just like long term, I don't think it's going to hold value as well as a building that's more than 50% owner occupied. That's maybe more just of a personal opinion for me, but I have some examples. Like I'm not going to talk bad about specific buildings in this video, but there's lots of examples of this happening. I would not be buying an investor only building. I would try to buy in a building where there's more end users. So those are the main five, but let's go over two bonuses. Okay. So one thing that we see a lot is that people don't really seem to care who the condo management is, the property manager. Now, I'll be honest with you. I've never had a client say to me like, oh my God, we love our property management. They're the absolute best. It's kind of like, who's the best of the worst out there? That's just kind of where things are at right now. I've never had a client say to me like, you know, our elevators are just perfect. They always work. They're always on time. There's never one of them down. There's never somebody moving. Elevators and property management is where you hear the biggest amount of complaints. I should probably do a video on the good ones and the bad ones, but that would probably just get me in trouble. But if you want to know, you can book a call and you can ask me and I can tell you. Now on the flip side, if you do look up specific property management companies on Google and you see their Google reviews, just keep in mind as well, like people don't typically go out of their way to leave a review for something if they really liked it. It's typically only people that have a negative experience that actually leave that review. So if you see a property management company online with like a 2.6 out of 5, doesn't necessarily mean they're that bad. It's just that the angry people went there to leave the reviews and the people that were happy went on with their lives. And finally, don't buy in a building just because the amenities. There are so many times we've had clients over the years are like, I want a really nice gym. I want a great pool. This is what I'm looking for. And then five years later, when I sell it for them, I'm like, how many times did you use that gym? How many times did you actually get in that pool? They're like, uh, once, right? So 95% of your time you're spending in the unit. That should be 95% of the decision on why you're buying this type of property. Thank you for watching. If you made it to the end, there's two other videos I'd recommend you take a look at. I have my in-depth ultimate buyer's guide video. This goes step by step through the entire process. This is probably the most in-depth video I've ever posted on this channel, or you can check out our top 10 condos in downtown Toronto. My name is Tom Story. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned something new today. And remember, home is where your story begins.